And again, I just want to thank everyone so much for being here, for fighting the fights that you are fighting, and for very much leading the way forward. And I think O'Malley's comments, you know, just are unsurpassed, unsurpassable, really state this incredibly deep-seated crisis of yeah. colonialism and settler colonialism that is carried on across this country uh, on the reservations to which yes. indigenous yes. people have been uh, really forced and confined uh, across the country, the lands that have been stolen. Yes. In Palestine, where we continue to see the struggles of indigenous people against yes. the settler colonial yes. uh, ethnic uh, ethnic nation state of Israel. So these are these are very much struggles that we are fighting. And also, as O'Malley said, we're seeing a desperate empire now. We are seeing a desperate uh, colonialist settler uh, empire whose uh, ways of the world and whose control of the world has basically been lost. Yes. This is an, an empire that is essentially in a tailspin now. It is in a slow motion <laughs> crash. It's like an airplane where the uh, engine is no longer functioning and it has begun to go into a tailspin, which is why perhaps it is doubling down no, now with such uh, fervor uh, in all kinds of ways. And we're seeing this militarization of our economy a militarization of our local uh, and domestic police who are receiving military equipment through this 1030 program, you know, which is providing the equipment with which O'Malley's home yes. was raided. This is an absolute outrage. It's providing the equipment and the training for the police forces that are now invading the campuses across the country for the violence that is being perpetrated, not only routinely against the black community, but also very much uh, against the student community right yeah. now. So we're in a, a desperate situation here where the empire is, is doubling down because we the people are rising up and we're saying this is enough. And it's so important, I think, for us to know uh, Alice Walker's wisdom, as, as she expressed it, that the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. And this is so true now when 44 million young people are locked into unpayable student loan debt when half of all renters can no longer afford to keep a roof over their heads, when homelessness is skyrocketing, when rates of eviction are at an all-time high, when uh, the real estate industry continues to call the shots and are buying up housing uh, as the uh, financial, financial real estate industry is basically grabbing the last uh, remnants of housing and driving up the price by buying it up. You know, in a healthcare system that continues to squander one out of every three dollars, one third, 33% of all healthcare expenditures now are spent on paper pushing and bureaucracy and CEO salaries and advertising, things that have nothing to do with health. We are spending twice as much as the next biggest spender and our health is really uh, in the tank here in this country where we have sky-high rates of just about every chronic disease and we are at the bottom among the uh, industrialized countries right now. So, so much is being wasted. Um, so much uh, hurt and sickness and death and disability is being imposed on us. <clears throat> and as Martin Luther King said, my country is the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. The largest cause of death and disability worldwide is basically, you know, it's poverty in conjunction with yeah. war. With war that since 9-11 <coughs> has killed a, somewhere between four and six million people that are really the responsibility of the United States. So the genocide being carried out now in Gaza is just uh, the tip of the iceberg of the genocides, the many genocides that yeah. have been practiced by the settler colonial yeah. militarized yeah. empire of the United States. And again, as O'Malley pointed out, this battle is being won not by the US empire. Right. In fact, the curves have crossed so that the economic development and growth and resources of the United States is, on, is substantially on the way down now, yeah. whereas the nations of the global south, if you want to say, the BRICS 
nations have actually exceeded us in economic growth and total GDP. So it's very clear we are no longer this monopolar empire that the United States would like the world to believe. That is a thing of the past. And the US needs to come to terms with that because it is basically going to war over and over again for absolutely absurd and outrageous uh, predatory reasons. Uh, the US has a policy called full spectrum dominance. Yes. It was announced shortly after uh, the uh, dismantling of the Soviet Union yes. when it was leaked by the New York Times that this is the new policy of the US, full spectrum dominance, which says that the US empire will dominate all areas of potential conflict, uh, economic, cyberspace, uh, land, sea, underwater, cyberspace, uh, outer space, everything. The US will dominate all domains of potential conflict and in all areas around the world, and that the US will crush any, any rising power, even at the regional yes. level, the US will crush it. And this is the policy that has been carried out with such enormous disaster, going way back, but this was articulated starting in the mid-1990s. This is what laid the groundwork for, uh, for the crisis around Ukraine and for uh, that, that exactly. proxy war, exactly. essentially. This is a proxy war on yeah. behalf of the US empire. This is an entirely avoidable disaster where it is the people of Ukraine who are paying in blood in order to maintain this illusion of the US empire. This is a shame, this is happening uh, you know, in Ukraine, it's happening far worse in Gaza, the most intensive uh, genocide and destruction that exists on record. It's going on elsewhere around the world, particularly in Africa and the yeah. DRC. There are genocides which are also underway, very much related to uh, US global dominance. And it is on, in the cards right now in China as well. So this is not a policy and an approach to foreign policy that we can survive. We in the United States are also in the crosshairs of this incredibly criminal uh, foreign policy. And just to know that one single nuclear armed submarine contains the equivalent of 5,000 Hiroshima bombs, that's one, we have 14 of them. And in, uh, in this expanding Middle East war now that Netanyahu is, is seeking to expand, right. to engage Iran, to drag the US into it, because he has the full support of Joe Biden to do whatever he wants. He has a green light uh, to do whatever he wants and to be funded for it and to have the military equipment for it. The US here was just, you know, we just gave another $26 billion to continue this in the same week that hundreds of bodies were being unearthed in these uh, outrageous war crimes being committed by Israel in the many hospitals uh, around, uh, throughout Palestine, basically, and, and throughout Gaza. So the US is rewarding Israel, and the baton is being handed from the presidency, from Joe Biden, the baton has been passed to uh, Bibi Netanyahu to basically be the commander in chief here, because he is given the license to establish our foreign policy without any accountability whatsoever and with a guarantee that he will be supported. So this is absolute madness. And as I mentioned, we are all in the target hairs of this because that war could readily go nuclear uh, and it could readily go global. The, uh, the, you know, the, the war that uh, Netanyahu is seeking to establish with Iran, Iran is uh, in an alliance with Russia, yeah. a military and uh, uh, equipment alliance with Russia. Russia is obviously nuclear armed. Israel is nuclear armed. The U.S. is nuclear armed. We have 14 nuclear armed submarines in undisclosed locations around the world, and you can be sure that they are located exactly where the hot spots are. So this could happen, and if a single nuclear submarine were to dis discharge its weapons, that will cause a uh, nuclear winter, basically you kick up enough debris into the upper atmosphere where it does not weather down, it does not settle. You have years or decades worth of starvation. So this is basically curtains for us all. It could yeah. easily become that. There is no excuse for nuclear weapons to even be existing now, right. let alone for these uh, outrageous, endless, and genocidal wars to be conducted. So the American people are in the target hairs because we are impoverished by this uh, military monster which uses half 
more than half actually of our discretionary congressional dollars. So we're not only being impoverished, we are also being endangered. And for the American people to know this, already the American people oppose US militarism, already the American people oppose uh, this genocidal war in Gaza. And for people to know what they are paying, it is again, it is $12,000 per household this year alone. $12,000, imagine what you could have done with $12,000. We need to have a war tax, but above all, you know, so that it's clear what is being spent in our name, but above all, we need to abolish this military industrial complex. We need to abolish this empire, which is putting us all at risk all around the world. It needs to be brought to an end. And the final comment is that in this race, there are three pro-genocide, pro-war, anti-worker, anti-climate action campaigns. There are three of them that will basically be dividing the pro-genocide, pro-war vote. There will be one and only one campaign that will be on the ballot across the country to challenge that, to challenge empire with an anti-genocide, anti-war, pro-worker, climate emergency campaign to do what needs to be done and what actually is within our reach. This is the perfect storm. The American people are hurting and are already in rebellion. Once we get on the ballot, then we can move on to actually begin to conduct a campaign. This is why they make it so hard. They want to keep us tied up in the battle to get on the ballot, to simply allow the American people the other choices that the American people are clamoring for. So there is a real potential to overthrow you know, and to break the stranglehold of empire and oligarchy in this election. And I urge you to just be full in the embrace of that fight, a moment like this may never come again, where we can see the pro-war vote divided th three ways, and for us to be the fourth choice. In an election where there are four strong candidates, you can see an election won when it's divided four ways with as little as 26% of the vote. We are currently running at 4% across the country, at 12% among people 35 and under. This is better than Bernie Sanders was doing before he broke out in 2016. So don't let anyone tell you that standing up and resisting empire is futile or that we cannot actually win the day and even win the White House, turn the White House into a greenhouse and have a better future and a little bit more to all of us. So thank you all so much for being a part of this. Thank you to uh, Yashi, uh, I'm sorry, to Omali Yashatila, and to um, Bob Suberi. Thank you also to Zaki. Uh, thank you to Chugo, wherever.